Standby. For this standby, I was just playing one of my favorite iPad games, which is called Osmos. In this game, you're this little blue moat, and you fly around by throwing things out the back, and uh, you have to absorb other moats in order to become the largest. I don't know about you, but when I play games, I love thinking about the science, the physics that's behind these games. I've actually done a really deep dive on this game in particular, all in an effort to try to understand if the rules of physics, oop, there I go, if the rules of physics are obeyed inside this game. In fact, I even wrote an article about it. Aha. The coolest thing about this is that if you start with a really simple question, is momentum conserved when two of these things collide with each other? You get led down this crazy rabbit hole about how many dimensions there are inside this video game. So if you think of like old school video games, right? Oh, these were terrible. Eject! You could think about these worlds as sort of inherently two-dimensional, right? Mario is running against a flat world. And if you remember, even in Super Mario 3, there's this like crazy mind-blowing thing to get one of the whistles. You actually fall behind the two-dimensional world and it's somehow 3D and it's crazy. What's cool about Osmos is as you play it, it's not clear whether those moats are two-dimensional or three-dimensional. So why does any of this matter? It matters for one really important reason. Look around our universe. How many dimensions is this video game? It turns out that you can actually answer that question. You can measure how many dimensions something is. I mean, like, with literally just a ruler. All you need to be able to do that is to take one object and merge it with another. Whoop. Now, I could do that in Osmos because it's a video game, but I'm trying to think how we could do that in the real world. All right, balloons, balloons. I don't feel like getting wet today. Oh my God! We got some clippies up in the hand. Like, I, I just feel like I have to show you the math. Why? Why do I have to show you the math? Yes, I do. I'm gonna do it now. I'm no math genius, but I was able to derive. Oh my goodness, this place is a mess. How long is that thing gonna keep spinning? This is amazing. New standby, here we go. How long is it gonna spin? Oh, it stops! Let's say you've got two one-dimensional objects that you want to combine together. This one's got a length L1, this one has a length L2. Well, if we're living in a one-dimensional universe, then when you combine these two things together, their new length is just gonna be L1 plus L2, right? That's pretty simple. Now, if we were living in a two-dimensional universe, though, you could imagine combining these a different way. Here would be length one, and here would be length two in the other dimension. And if you paid attention in your geometry class, you would know then that the total length of this thing then is given by the Pythagorean theorem. So the length of this new side would be L1 squared plus L2 squared is the total length squared. Well, it turns out this general pattern applies to any number of dimensions. So if you have two circles and you combine them together, well, those are two dimensional. So here's one circle, here's the other circle. Each one has a radius. That means when they get combined together and they make a larger object, we can actually calculate what this new radius is going to be. Let's just make this like super simple. Let's say each of these has a radius of one and we're gonna combine them together. Now in the one dimensional case, in a one dimensional universe, you add these together and it's just one plus one equals two. That was our size. In a two dimensional case though, it's just a little more complicated. You actually have to add them like this, one squared plus one squared. And then your final answer actually would be the square root of two, which is about 1.4. So if you were to combine, these were two dimensional circles. If you were to combine them together, the actual radius of your new circle would be 
uh, about 1.4 in a two-dimensional world. Now, in a three-dimensional world, you'll start to see the pattern. It's one cubed. So if these were spheres, right, and we wanted to find out if I take one sphere and merge it with another sphere, how big would the, the new sphere be? Well, I'd actually have to take then the cube root of two. One, three, 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 three. That is about 1.25. Now, here's the crazy thing. If we were living in a hundred dimensional universe, then the exact same equation applies. If I combined two hundred dimensional objects, well, I don't even know what that means, but it would be one to the power of a hundred plus one to the power of a hundred. So this would actually be the hundredth root of two. We can figure that out. 1.007. So what does this all mean? What it means is if you take two objects and you lump them together, by measuring the size of the objects before they've been thwumped and after they've been thwumped, you can actually determine how many dimensions that object has. Even if that object has more dimensions than you can possibly perceive. So if there was some way for me to merge these two oranges together, then by measuring the size of the merged orange thing, I could tell how many dimensions these were. Now, it, it's possible that these are five-dimensional oranges, right? But that I can actually only perceive three of those dimensions. But even if they were five-dimensional oranges, I could still tell that because when I merged them together, their new size would be like a fifth root of two. It would only be 14% bigger. So when I merge them together, if it's 40% bigger, it would be two-dimensional. If it's 25% bigger, it would be three-dimensional. If it's 14%, you get the idea. So with a ruler and merging things together, you can actually measure the dimensionality of an object or perhaps the universe as a whole. In case you didn't pay attention back in geometry class and none of this math is making any sense, I want to show you by actually merging real physical objects. I'm going to try to merge two water balloons to illustrate a 3D case and for a 2D case I'm going to use drops of food coloring merged together. Each one is three drops. Let's see if I can get them to combine. Hello, hello. Oh, come on. It's too big, it's too big. Let's try it again. Can we combine these guys? Come on. You know, it's a lot easier in the video game. Here they go. Here they go. <gasps> now, because these are two-dimensional, the new drop is 40% larger than the original drops. Now let's try doing this in three dimensions. Somehow, by some miracle, without spilling obscene amounts of water, I am going to combine the water that is in these two balloons, all right? And without spilling any. Yeah, right. I'm gonna put some air in it. Okay, I'm gonna dump all that water. Oh! Oh, it sort of almost worked, and then it absolutely didn't work. <sighs> what a terrible mess. You know, if you paid attention in geometry class, we wouldn't have to be going through all this. All right, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to give you the answer. All right, watch this. When you do this analysis, all right, when you actually measure the size before and after two things are combined, you can do this not only in the real world, but you can do it in virtual worlds. And I did it inside this video game. What I found was really surprising. What I found was that the video game is not two-dimensional, and it's not three-dimensional. It's actually in between two and three dimensions. Now stop and think about that for a second. What does an object look like if it's not two-dimensional, it's not a two-dimensional circle, and it's not a three-dimensional sphere, but it's somehow between those two things? A dimension of two and a half does not exist in our universe, as far as we know. 
but it does in this virtual world. You know, I said this equation works whether you're dealing with one dimension, two dimensions, or a hundred dimensions. In fact, it still works when you're dealing with two and a half dimensions. And that's one of the amazing things about mathematics is that we are not limited by our one reality. We can describe any reality, even if it is beyond our imagination. And this is when we get to the really, really cool thing about dimensions. So let's say the Wheat Wheatson's box in its flattened state represents the entire universe. Well, you have to imagine that even though this is flat, okay, this is our full three-dimensional universe. It has all the galaxies, all the planets, us, every bit of our reality, height, depth, width, and time all wrapped up in this one wheat thins box. If we add just one additional dimension to our universe, that's you, right beneath you in this other fourth dimension, two inches this far away from you, literally this far away from you, is an entire another universe. Look, there's a whole another layer right here. Now think about that, the entire universe, two inches away from any given point in the universe is another point in a totally separate entire universe that is completely inaccessible and invisible to us. Two inches away from your hand, literally, in this other dimension is potentially another person, potentially another planet. Not only about you, but I'm a spiritual guy. And so when I hear stories about people experiencing God or experiencing angels or, you know, interactions with things we cannot see, I can't help but think, of course, that makes perfect sense because we see physical evidence that our universe has additional dimensions. And these additional dimensions are centimeters away from us and potentially interacting with ours at certain points in time. All that would mean, right, is for these two things to come together and touch at a certain point in time. Whoa, okay, we're getting deep thoughts here, all from this crazy video game. If we were to try to draw a conclusion here, I'm not sure that we could. The one thing I will say is that there's physics I don't fully understand, and that physics allows us to make measurements. And a lot like a lot like combining two water balloons, when you do certain crazy events, you can actually see whether some of that material is being spread over just three dimensions or whether it's being spread over five dimensions. You can see whether some of that energy is leaking out into other dimensions. And those are measurements, real physical measurements that can be made. By making those measurements, scientists can actually conclude how many dimensions our universe has. What I want you to remember though, when this is all said and done, is how much easier this would be to understand if you just paid attention to math class. Stand by.